Welcome to day number 26, and we are looking again at John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, where John writes the purpose for his gospel, and here's what he says in verse 31, but these are written, in other words, the stories of what Jesus has been doing during Eastertide in resurrected body, that these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Now, what you would reference before Peter was that that sounds an awful lot like the prologue in John, right? Yeah. In John chapter one. And yeah. so let's talk about that just for a little bit. Well, um, if you sat down each of the gospel writers mm -hmm. and you're like, really, what's your shtick? Right. Matthew, Mark, and Luke would say, well, I wrote a story about Jesus coming to bring the kingdom of God. Yes. And John That's would go, the core message. Right. And yeah. John would go, I wrote a story about Jesus coming to bring everlasting life. And then Matthew, Mark, and Luke would go, well, don't you mean the kingdom of God? And John would go, well, don't you mean everlasting life? And then someone would go like, you know what? I'm going to lock you four in here and you're going to figure this out. Right. And at the end of a day or two, biblical scholars tell us they're really seeming to get at, at incredibly similar theological ideas, right. but with a different language. Yes. So John develops this theme of life or eternal life, yep. true life throughout the whole of his gospel. And so um, taking a look at a couple of those more famous passages may be helpful in yes. trying to get a handle on exactly on what's what being it means said. that by believing you may have life in his name. And right. the first spot right out of the gate swinging yes. is the prologue of John, John 1. So John 1, 1. And uh, it basically says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. And then it talks about, in verse 4, in Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So as we look at that, Peter, how do we connect those two together? Yeah. What we were just looking at near the end of John, and we're kind of looking at this is bookends right. of what John's trying to communicate to us. Yeah. So we're in Easter tide. Right. It's an important season where we're really investigating yeah. Jesus. And so what kind of bubbles to the top as we're talking about that? Yeah, well, one of the things that tells us is that John is kind of aiming for the resurrection. Right. Right from the beginning of his gospel. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. And yeah. he's um, and he's also, how do you put it, sort of aiming at the resurrection from the creation. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about this at City Church many times. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of Genesis backdrop to John well, chapter 1. in the one. beginning was, right. and that's the first words of the Bible. And then all this creation yeah. stuff that all things are made in him and through him. And so, you know, John is taking the weight of the creation stuff in Genesis and trying to throw it on Jesus. Yes. And part of what happens in Genesis is God makes life. Right? Yes, right. So starting off with this, you know, all things were made in him and through him. Mm -hmm. In him was life. I think there's a kind of subtext like in him was life in the same way that God mm -hmm. brought life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness not overcome it. Right. But he's also looking forward to the resurrection event where I think John would say, well, through his whole life, through his whole career, in Jesus was life. Mm -hmm. But in the resurrection, there's clearly an, a new kind of life or a different kind of life. Right, right. There's a new creation event that is Jesus's life, that is Jesus's resurrection. Right. And that's what I think uh, you yeah. really need to pay attention to. Sure. There's this sense that the most obvious sense is in a literal physical sense. Right. Jesus bodily dies and then is bodily resurrected. Correct. John knows that we're all smart enough to see that. Mm -hmm. But John is also constantly inviting us to see uh, a qualitative difference in life. Sure. Um, in the lives we experience now and the lives we look forward to, as the Bible says, in the age to come. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I think some of the faith thing comes in. Yeah. Let's take a look at John 3.16 to kind of give us a sense of that. And I think it's worth us mentioning this verse because it is so um, quoted. quoted. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah. 
And Peter, a lot of times when we think about, okay, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we look at that as very historical. And then it says here that we shall have a, eternal life, shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it almost looks like, well, Jesus' resurrection, historical, and eternal life is there, right? Yeah. It's on the other side of this right. life. So there's life, there's Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, there's life, and then there's eternal right. life. And yet what we believe is in Jesus, that eternal life is now here now. Yeah. Right? Well, there's a, um, uh, it's usually, it's often translated eternal or everlasting life. Yeah. Right. And the thought is, oh, well, it's life that goes on infinitely. But right. the, the Greek is um, zoen ionion, hmm. um, which means sort of the life of the age, okay. or the life of the epoch. Hmm. You might jokingly call it age appropriate. Right. And the whole point is, really like, well, what's what is the? There's this sense in the New Testament that there is an age yes. or a time or a reign or a mm -hmm. um, a rule of God that's breaking into the world. Right. And in the future, it's going to be everything. Yeah. But right now, it's in conflict with the difficulty and brokenness and fallenness of the world as it is. Right. And so we might say this way, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that anyone who believes in him will not perish, mm -hmm. but will have the life of God's kingdom, of the reign of God, of the capital A age. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is true, parenthetically, that this is kind of the last epoch of human history right. as yep. Christians believe it. Right. So it does happen not to have an end, but the point isn't that yep. it's endless. Yep. The point is that it is the age, capital A, yes. where God actually has God's way in the world. And the resurrection is kind of like the first burst of that yes. into the physical world. Yeah. And so in Jesus was life, and Jesus was the life that is the life that comes from God's way of orchestrating and ruling and, mm -hmm. and uh, ordering the world. And, and we call in, that the kingdom of God. We call it the kingdom of God. And that's what yeah. the synoptics would call it, this yes. everlasting life. Yeah. Everlasting life is kind of what life is like in the kingdom sure. of God. Sure, sure. Um, uh, and then we see that kind of come literally out of a tomb in the resurrection. Right. So as we close out our thought about the purpose for the gospel is that both at the, in, with John 3.16 and then here in John 20, it says, believing you may have life yeah. in his name. So I think the final thought that we want to leave is that this comes by putting our faith, our hope right. and trust in Jesus. When you think about believing, yeah. Um, at times, I know that that's difficult. We've been talking a couple days ago about scientific and belief. And, but we find ourselves here where the gospel's calling us in to say, you believe in him. You don't work for it, right? You don't pay for it. This is something that happens through faith. It's belief. It's trust. And when we do that in his name, then that eternal life now fills us and gives us life now. Yeah, right? and I don't think as a transactional bit, I don't think Jesus is like, you know, you vote for me, I'll give you all this stuff. Right, I right. think it's the sense that um, what, you know, faith for the gospel of John Pistis is this, um, it's this like life orientation. Like mm -hmm. it's not just kind of assent intellectually to some doctrinal, doctrinal claims. Oh, right, right, it right. It doesn't. There's you know, a spiritual life well, here. Well, it involves every part of you because I think, I think the New Testament has a sense that human lives move in a direction or they're oriented somewhere or uh, there, right? right? And so Jesus is saying, you get the life that comes from me mm -hmm. when you orient yourself at me, mm -hmm. not as a kind of transaction, but as a matter of fact. So for instance, we could think of it this way. If you really believe in Jesus, yeah. then you would believe that what Jesus tells you you should do with your life is what you should do with your Correct. life. That's right. That's easy to, right? Yeah. That, that makes yeah. a good amount of, so if I really trust Jesus and Jesus says, move here, do this, like, says like, yeah, it kind of births a dream as some yeah. people have yeah, experienced. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. come Jesus, like, oh, I discover I want to do this thing instead. Right. Well, that's, that is the eternal life breaking into this moment. And it's really easy to see why it wouldn't be able to happen without believing in Jesus. Right, right. Because you wouldn't trust him to do it anyway. Yeah, that's true. And you know, as we now close out in prayer, I'm going to pray again for the idea of Jesus breathing. 
because we notice that the disciples begin to take a new trajectory when the Holy Spirit inhabits them, where they look at him, they inspect him, and they open up their hearts to him, they believe in him, and then the Holy Spirit enters them. So we're going to conclude this video with that prayer again, which is the same prayer we prayed a few days ago. So let's pray together. Well, Jesus, thank you for who you are to us. Thank you for your incredible love for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Christ into this world. And it's now in this moment again that we ask that all of us, if we have not done it up until this point, every woman and man, that we would now take the opportunity to pray and to believe in Jesus' name and all that that means. So Jesus, in this moment, we invite you through faith to touch the hearts and lives of women and men. Lord, we also ask that you would breathe on each one that turns their faith to you and trusts in you and puts their hope in you. And Lord, in that, we pray that eternal life would invest itself in us now. Lord, we pray for this and we believe for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you and we look forward to seeing you at tomorrow's video.